Hey everybody, how's it going? I am asked a lot of questions by rail fans about rail fanning on Tehachapi. Well, where to go, where not to go, what to do, what not to do, this, that, and the other. So I thought I would make a video of some of the things that you should know about rail fanning on the Tehachapi Pass. I was going to make it 10 things, but uh, who knows how many I'll get to. I may not get to 10, I may get to 20. But in any case, you're going to know a few of the things to expect and to not expect if you're going to rail fan on the Tehachapi. All right, let's get on with the first thing right now. And the first thing is never loiter on the tracks. Uh, I have ways of knowing where trains are at, at all times. And if I don't know where they are, I don't loiter on the tracks. I don't foul the tracks. I might walk across them to get to a better place, but I do not hang out by the tracks and you should never hang out by the tracks. Uh, stay at least, at the very least, 10 or 15 feet away from the tracks. That way when the train crews come, especially up here on the mountain, as you can see, we got a curve right there on that side of me, and another one right there on that side of me. The speed limit up here is 23 miles an hour, whether you're going up or down. Uh, give the train crews plenty of time to see you and know that you're not on the tracks. Wave at them. Let them know that you see them. Do not jump out on the tracks. And I've talked about this in my uh, rail fanning safely and responsibly video. Don't go out on the tracks to get that shot. Stay away from the tracks. You could get up there thinking you're going to grab that shot, uh, slip on that ballast, fall over on the rail, trip on the rail. You got this rail sitting next to you, uneven footing everywhere. So stay away from the tracks. Do not hang out on the tracks to get that shot because that is the shot that the train crews will report and then you're going to be explaining yourself to someone. So anyway, uh, and another thing I should say is you see that there isn't much sight distance up here. If these trains are coming down the hill, which that's up the hill behind me. So if a train was coming to come behind me right now, he would be going down the hill. They are not, they're pretty much coasting. They're in dynamics usually, but they're not making much noise. And if the wind is blowing, west, the westerly wind, which is blowing towards the east behind me here, you might not hear them. All right, the next thing that you should know is that if you're gonna be out here, and I picked this location because there are very places, I have climbed up in these places up here to get shots. I have shot trains from up there, over there, and right there on the inside of that curve is where the big derailment happened in January of 2023. So people like me, I am all over the place here. And there's also a pretty uh, steep fill here. It's, I don't know, five feet tall, four feet tall from ground level here. So you have everything from a relatively smooth right-of-way road here to fills where you, if you want to, might want to cross the tracks or be up in a place like that, you need to have a good sturdy set of boots. I recommend long sturdy pants like these jeans. Uh, they will really do you a lot of good. I have seen people out here in flip flops, light shoes, shorts, and I'm as gu I'm, I'm guilty of coming out here in shorts every once in a while too when it's really hot. I don't come out and shoot videos much when it's hot because it's hot. But even so, I generally wear long pants. You never know if you're going to bust through bushes or, you know, you can up there on top of this hill, you can see that there is a lot of brush in this area. There are very few places where there aren't things to scratch your legs on, trip over. Uh, I did a video about rail fanning and snake safety. Uh, you're better off having a pair of long pants on just in case good high top sturdy boots like these ones that i'm wearing these have eight inch tops but uh yeah don't wear flip-flops there's so many things as you can see that you can step on you can roll your ankle on rocks like those back there trying to if you wanted to try to scurry over these tracks and flip-flops your flip-flop probably wouldn't stay with you there are uh, pieces of lumber out here and boards with nails sticking up out of them there's just all kinds of stuff that you can injure yourself on roll an ankle cut yourself 
get bit by a snake. That's probably not going to happen, but you never know, and it's always better to be prepared. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the vehicle. I've got the uh, 2019 F-150 here. It's a good truck, but it's not a four-wheel drive. You do not need a four-wheel drive to get around out here. Uh, well, when it's raining, you might, but I don't come out here and drive on these roads when they're muddy because I have what's called common sense, which isn't so common these days, but I still try to exercise it. Uh, you want to have a vehicle that's got plenty of ground clearance and it's got plenty of power and traction because, as you can see, you may have to go up hills like this depending on where you are most of the places that the average rail fan's going to go you're not going to have to deal with stuff like this but there are some pretty hardcore people and i've seen them out here but you can see how rough that is so you might get bounced around a little bit and if you have to slow down too much to go over those bumps then you have a chance of having trouble getting going again so if you love your pickup or your or your uh SUV or whatever you're gonna be driving out here you probably don't want to come to places like this and you also want to have some durable tires you don't need a big hairy nasty noisy off-road type tread but you need to have durable tires you don't want to bring your vehicle up here if your tires are starting to get a little worn out and bald uh, you uh, don't want to have slicks up here but uh, yeah, you need to have these tires. There's a lot of stuff you can run over up here. A lot of this ballast is has sharp edges. And even though they use concrete ties up here now, as you can see, there are still a lot of spikes laying around, tie plates, just general pieces of metal that will definitely give you trouble. And I can say that from experience. While I've never had it happen on my personal truck, I've lost count of how many flats I've had on right-of-way roads over the course of my career up here and in other places. Also, it is very, very dirty up here. And I don't mean sooty and black, but it's dusty. Even if you're not the one creating dust, there's a lot of dirt up here. It's usually breezy. If you're anywhere above Caliente, it's usually breezy up here. That's going to get uh, your car dirty. If you have your windows rolled down, like I do right now, it's going to get in your truck. So if you're one of these clean freaks, rail fanning on Tehachapi Pass may not be your cup of tea. All right, well, the next thing I want to talk about are gates. Right now, I am at the Tehachapi Loop on the inside of the loop, and I am on Union Pacific property. If I were to go through that gate, I would no longer be on railroad property, and neither would you. Sorry for the shadows. Summer or winter time, the sun's really low. There's nothing I can do about it. That road there is the road that goes to the former Loop Ranch. That Loop, the, the Loop Ranch, is uh, no longer operating, and no one lives there. That's part of the conservancy. So you don't want to go down that road either if you're here, because you'll go down a little further. And there's a, there are gates down there that you probably won't be able to get in and out of because they're generally locked anymore. But anyway, anytime you are on uh, railroad property if you're wherever you are i've seen people do it down at tunnel five in that area anytime you go through a gate you are no longer on railroad property you are on private property as i said this one goes on to the nature conservancy down around uh woodford uh go through a gate there or across a cattle guard for that matter you uh could end up on the three peaks ranch the cummings ranch if you're down in that area, the McCarthy Ranch, the Toll House Ranch, and uh, if you get out there, I don't know, I know some of those ranchers personally, so they don't really care if I'm out there, they know I'm not going to leave any gates open, but uh, I don't know, maybe they'll be cool to you, maybe they won't, the Tone Ranch won't, Tone Ranch doesn't want anybody on their property, and I don't go on their property, I don't proceed through their gates, and uh, actually, there are only two ranchers whose property I will go on to without contacting them about permission and that's just because I know them personally but chances are if you're just a rail fan up here you don't know any of these people so don't go through their gates and if you're not going to take my advice and you're going to go through the gates anyway do not leave them open 
Doesn't matter if you see any cattle around or whatever, any livestock, if any horses or whatever, do not leave gates open. If you go through them, close them behind you. Make sure to do that because that's what the ranchers get the most pissed about is people leaving gates open and their livestock getting out. Okay, I'm just going to hit on this one briefly because I did an entire video about snake safety while you're rail fanning. I, as I said, I'll link that in the description below. But you don't want to go around rock piles like this or around rail stuff laying uh, around like that. It gives up. You know, snakes like to hang out in places where generally where they can't be seen and lost their sunning to get warm. Sometimes they'll lay out in the middle of the road in that case. Sorry, man, it got really windy all of a sudden. Won't even, my dead cat won't even hardly stay on. But anyway, yeah. Always watch out for snakes. It is uh, November 12th right now, and it's beautiful. Snakes could easily be out here. It's pretty cool at night up here, so they're going to be lethargic even when it starts to warm up, but they will still be around. But uh, starting in mid-spring, going to uh, mid-fall, you want to watch out for snakes. All right, well, one of the other things to talk about here, and I'm going to talk about two things while I'm here, is the Tehachapi Loop and the Tehachapi Loop Overlook. This is on Woodford Tehachapi Road. It's three miles from Keene and seven miles from Tehachapi. But the Friends of the Tehachapi Depot funded the construction of this uh, beautiful, nice overlook uh, platform in 2021. And it's really cool. You can see it's fenced. So your kids, you bring them up here, and the, they can't fall through there, get down the hill and get hurt, or you have to go chase them. Same with your animals. The Tehachapi Loop, as you can see behind me, there's a train going around it right now, coming up the hill. And uh, one of the other things, as long as we're here talking, <laughs> It's very windy today. And uh, so one of the other things I'm going to hit on right now is the weather. Uh, it's always uh, been kind of a running joke in Tehachapi. If you don't like the weather in Tehachapi, stick around a little while. It'll probably change. And Tehachapi's uh, nickname is the land of four seasons, all in one day. But today, it's not cold. It's it probably in the low 50s, I guess, but it's really windy. It's been raining off and on. And uh, I always carry a light shirt. This is a long sleeve shirt. I always carry one of these in my truck. I don't get cold that easily. It's, uh, or as I said, cool, but into December and through the winter, it gets cold up here, especially if the wind blows. It snows up here, so always be aware of that when you make plans to come to this area. If you want to come up and rail fan, if you want to come to the of the overlook. Just be aware, it's a very curvy road. It's got some steep sections on it. Uh, they close it a lot during uh, snow. But uh, it also, in the summertime, it also gets hot up here. Uh, Tehachapi usually doesn't get over 95, but the past couple of summers it has. Been pretty hot up there. In Caliente, Bealville, that area, triple digits are very common in the summertime. So if you're gonna come here in the summer, make sure that you are prepared, that you have, I, I tell people to wear a, a, a hat, sun uh, sunscreen, bring plenty of water with you, snacks and stuff like that. Uh, make sure you're taking care of yourself for the weather. But anyway, uh, if you are going to come to the Tehachapi Loop, I don't suggest coming up here if you have a great big motor home, uh, one of those great big ones, or if you have a big fifth wheel trailer. They have a pretty good sized parking area across the street. There's nobody here today but me. But if you were to come up here in a vehicle like that and there were six or seven cars parked in there, which is not uncommon, then uh, you would... Uh, wouldn't have anywhere to park and there is nowhere to turn around. If you go down to Keene and come up, if you come up that way, you can't turn around. You're on this road all the way to Tehachapi and it gets really tight up above. So uh, be aware of that. A medium-sized motorhome or a 
smaller camp trailer, you'll be all right. And they do bring tour buses down here, but not very often. So anyway, Tehachapi Loop Overlook and Woodford Tehachapi Road and a little weather. One of the things you need to know is when to come, when not to come, and what to expect and what not to expect when you get here. I do not recommend coming up on Mondays. Mondays are generally uh, maintenance Mondays, they call them. Not always, but generally. And uh, gives the uh, maintenance away guys time to do their stuff, signal guys time to do their stuff. And if you show up on a Monday, you're liable to run into this kind of stuff. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. And even on other days of the week, it's still always a crapshoot. You just never know what you're going to get. I tell people all the time, you might see 10 trains in two hours. You might see two trains in 10 hours. They don't schedule trains, so you never know what's coming. And uh, some days, it's like this. <sighs> Where are all the trains? Sister Hatchapi, they're supposed to be there's supposed to be a lot of trains. Somebody told me that. I read that somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've already been here all morning. I guess I'll go take a nap. <laughs> Still no trains. I think someone's been lying to me. Huh. And some days it's like this. Okay, the next thing we'll talk about is uh, some of the cool lodging facilities up here. Now, nah, you can stay at any hotel or motel in Tehachapi. There's a bunch of them out at Summit. There's a bunch of them in town. Uh, I guess most of them are pretty nice. I don't know. I've never stayed at a motel or a hotel in Tehachapi. But anyway, what they do have up here, though, you can see behind me here, this is uh, Tunnel 10 right above the loop. And behind me here is Quintessentials Airbnb. A guy named Kirk Quinn runs this. He's a pretty cool cat. And uh, the building right over here, the small building over here, is the actual Airbnb. But uh, it is on uh, Burton's Curve. And a guy named Dave Burton is the one who this is named for. He built that place up there originally. And uh, it's my understanding that Quintessentials is only like 79 bucks a night. It's right here above the loop. You're going to generally see a lot of traffic, especially at night. If you're spending the night, this has always been primarily a nighttime division for Southern Pacific, Union Pacific, and a lot of BNSF. Okay, we have the uh, bed and trains, bed and breakfast up there. That is there in center frame. That belongs to... Uh, Friends of mine, Mike and Cheryl Butters, they're the ones, if you're familiar with the Attached Be Live train cam, who started that. They are the uh, operators, not always the moderators, but the operators of that. And their place is, well, between the cable crossover and West Cable down there. But uh, the uh, cable cam is at their place up there. 
Uh, they have invited Jennifer and I to come up there and spend a weekend, check it out. As soon as the weather changes and the grass gets greener, we get a little snow on the ground, we can differentiate it from summertime. We're going to uh, go take advantage of that. There's some really, really cool people. I'm really looking forward to it. If you're in the area and you want to watch some trains in a cool place, go check out Bed and Trains. And it is my understanding that this is also destined to be uh, an Airbnb here in Tehachapi. We'll just ride up the right up the tracks from the Butters place. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is places to eat while you're up here chasing trains around. And uh, we'll start right here with the Keen Cafe. Sometimes you'll hear me in videos refer to this as the Keen Store. Uh, that's what we called it for years and years and years. But it is the Keen Cafe. It's been here for a really long time. I don't recall if I even ever heard when it was first opened. But it's been here ever since I can remember. And uh, I eat here a lot. I probably eat here more than any other place on the mountain. And uh, good food, good staff. Uh, come give it a try. All right, got the burger spot here. Burger spot's been here forever. Uh, when I lived up here as a growing up, we ate here all the time, and I still eat here pretty regularly. Good greasy spoon place. I love it. They got good hamburgers. They got great corn dogs, pastrami's. Uh, really cool food. Got uh, Conan's Bakery over here. And you hear people refer to that sometimes as a Tehachapi icon. Anybody who refers to that as a Tehachapi icon hasn't lived in Tehachapi very long. The burger spot, that's iconic. Try it out sometime. Got Jay's Place on Golden Hills. And I've eaten here a couple of times. It's pretty good. So, uh, feel like driving a little ways out uh, past town, this is your place. Out on the uh, east edge of the downtown area here by the S-curve. Now there's a stop sign and wasn't always there. But you got the Village Grill. Village Grill is pretty good. Uh, I know some of the folks who work here in the mornings. As I said, I'm a breakfast person. I don't even know that I've ever had lunch here. But they're open breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And uh, always pretty friendly staff and pretty good food. And then Red House, Red House Barbecue. This place is really good. I really like this place. I don't eat here a lot because, as I said, I'm generally not up here for lunch or dinner. But uh, I've eaten here quite a few times, though, and it is really, really good. It smells awesome right now. I may have to run in and get me something. All right, uh, the last thing I want to hit on is if you're going to come up here and you haven't been to the Tatchby Depot Museum yet, it's a great little museum. I have some videos on my channel of trains going by here, videos of the touring the depot, of the signal garden out back. This is a great little depot. So if you're up here, you might as well come see the depot, even if you have seen it before. Come see it again. We change stuff up sometimes. All right, to Hatchby Depot. All right, well, that will bring to a conclusion some of the things that you should know about rail fanning on the Tehachapi Pass and uh, ending with the museum here, as I said a while ago. Here are the URLs to my PayPal and my Patreon. If you can help the channel out that way, I'd sure appreciate it. Keep shooting me the ideas. Drop in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorpoet 59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. I'll see you all later.